um, protected area. Then once it's already it's established, we will undertake a very aggressive um, marketing, um, marketing campaign at home and abroad so that we can be able to realize the growth of, uh, of at least 30%. And uh, at the end, of, in, the, in those five years, we'll be able to provide direct employment to the people and also um, <coughs> um, offer business opportunities in terms of lodges and shops um, and other facilities for tourists. I think my colleague also can say something. Uh, you have 20 seconds. <laughs> okay. Uh, just, uh, we'll have the figure, the map. This one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, our target is to increase uh, yeah. okay. to increase by 20 to 20 30 uh, to 30 percent. So we have to increase the lodge. We have only proposed one proposed one lodge. So we have also construct another lodge, and also we will we will construct uh, roads across the uh, uh, park so that the tourists can freely access, so to, to increase the tourist abundance. Uh, and this is what we want to add. Thank you. Sure, thanks. The participants from the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife and finally recognizes the farmers' representatives. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, we uh, support the popular uh, park if uh, the three conditions uh, would, uh, will fulfill. Because uh, the land is owned, uh, therefore there is a shortage of uh, uh, maize or other food. Therefore, other alternatives, alternatives will be uh, proposed uh, for the next generation and also for the farmers. Therefore, uh, one of this, and another is that uh, uh, about the GMO, the GMO may not be good. Uh, rather, rather the land race uh, should be uh, uh, taken as, uh, as an alternative, this alternative, because the GMO uh, not only increase the production, but the health effects uh, should be considered uh, to the farmers. Therefore, the proposal is uh, good, but as we mentioned, the alternate should be uh, considered uh, carefully. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for your opening statements. The chair now opens the floor for discussion. Um, if the chair can very kindly summarize the key points, we have one wholehearted um, no to the current proposal and uh, some that have proposed that they are happy with the proposal, others that are happy with the proposal but with preconditions. Um, chair recognizes state practitioners. Given that the land is already prop property of the government, we really don't see how the, the pastoralists uh, can, can oppose this. So, we, we actually think that we have to get some, some clarity about how they will respect the boundaries of this, um, of this reserve. This is, this is national property. It's not pastoral land. Yeah, even though it is a government property, uh, from starting from our ancestors, we used to graze our cattle in this place. So, uh, even though it is a government property, we have uh, what you call it, we have um, a customer a customary agreement or customary right. right to use this land. So you offer nothing? You simply say you're not going to recognize this reserve? We recognize it, but the size is, is not appropriate. It should be reduced and uh, in the dry season, we should allow to graze our cattle on the border of the, the park. That we can recognize. So what would the people from tourism say about a bunch of cows grazing across this beautiful African landscape? Once we convene our stakeholder uh, forum, 
that is where we will want to agree uh, how all this will operate and then we come up with guidelines that will fit in with the existing setup. But do you want cows grazing there half the year? I wouldn't if I were a tourist. <laughs> perhaps perhaps we can we can hear the voice of the the tourism stakeholders. So as 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 people who are interested in building a lodge near Lake Emily, we don't want to see cattle at least around the lodge. So we would like the area around the main road to be cattle free. So our tourists do not have to drive through a cattle herd when they come to the lodge. But the Caracal populations are going to come into conflict with your cattle. We have ample scientific evidence that when cows and caracals come together, mortality happens, and I'm sure the pastoralists are not going to be happy with this. Is there any guarantee they're not going to be destroying the caracals? Yeah. Can you give me the pointer? Yeah, here you go. Okay. The green. Uh, as you can see, um, we are asking the right to graze around this border. So Caracas can be found here, here, e everywhere. So these two uh, Caracas habitats are represent represented by this reserve. So uh, there is no uh, damage on Caracas. Even uh, the report from the university said uh, that the pastoralists affect uh, the Shiri, not the Caracas. So we agree with that report. I don't know where you bring this uh, report. It's, it's 1,220 <laughs> scientific papers that that note yeah, yeah, predation. Yeah, they can, but in this case, uh, the pastoralists do not affect the other Caracas uh, reserve. Only these two uh, habitats. So and these two habitats can be uh, can be represented. Okay. <coughs> You are saying yeah, you, are, uh, you need to use this area as a grading yes. and respect this one. Yeah. That means you are going to destroy this Karaka because this Karaka is represented by this entire, the, the, these two areas. Mm -hmm. But one thing we have to evidence, one, there is a conflict between Karaka and domestic animals that's yours. That means it may followed by a conflict that you are going to take an action. That means you are going to kill the Karaka. Uh, that means it is declining the Karaka population. But as a state, we need to improve the population because the tourists are interested to visit this area. And there is another evidence that in the total area, the Karaka population is declining. That means if you affect this area again, an, another burden. So as a state that we are worried about the whole, of course, we are worried about you people as a community. At the same time, we are worried about these farmers, but we are also worried about this conservation area as a source of income for the nation. So with this area, not only you are allowed to hear, but uh, we are proposing to shift this area as a buffer and you guys should be go up and but you can access this Objection. area at water. Objection. <laughs> that's you our didn't hear a proposal. That's our right. I, I, I think I think we should let the participants from the stake practitioners finish and then defer t back to us. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Yeah, we already say that we are worried about the community as a state. No, you, you, don't, you are not worried. Let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Here are proposal. Yeah. We're actually willing to give something. Yeah. So what we are proposing is, in order to reduce this conflict, let us leave this area free as a buffer zone in order to solve the conflict. And let us give you this area, this area, free from for you guys to graze. That means you can access on this way to up as a grazing. And uh, to uh, compensate this one, you guys should be leave this area. That means this Karaka is free 
uh, from conflicting with the domestic. That means your cattle is free, so you can increase your cattle number uh, without conflicting. At the same time, we can improve our tourism. Then you guys have free area, and even the corridor is open for you guys to move from here to here and from here to here. So what do you feel now? So what we're suggesting is that the pastoralism stay north of the river. Right. Yeah. But that they, that they not request greater access south of the river. Yeah. Okay, from what you're proposing, you can see that the area that you're offering is very small and little as, compo as compared to our area here. So, as, as you can also see, our cattle population is too big for that small area, so I don't think that would be viable. But what if you all were to respect rather strictly this boundary, you don't, you do not gain a very small area, but you do gain all of this area. We frankly don't care about the shrew because it's not a big, exciting, uh, charismatic organism that our people really care about at all. Okay. The chair will allow other participants who have not spoken up as yet. We'll go first to Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife and then to the tourism stakeholders. The green one. Oh, I think we've already agreed that the boundaries of the of the um, of this area are well defined and they are state owned. So I really don't understand the debate that is going on uh, about concessions in the north and in. But the pastoralists are not recognizing those boundaries. They want access to the whole area during the dry season. No, I think traditionally we uh, the way we, we we manage our nature reserves and protected areas is that we exclude the uh, domestic animals. So I think we stick to that and uh, so that uh, whatever goes on inside the park will not be interfered with, uh, whether it's tourists or other, any other business. Okay. Let's hear from the tourism stakeholders. Um, the green. green. What? The green. The green. Oh. We have a proposition that will make everyone happy. We hired some ecologists and we know that the Caracal uh, population is not doing as bad. So we would like to bring in international uh, or foreign hunters who would pay a lot of money to hunt the you know, old male populations. That way the state can generate a lot of money and uh, we can reduce the livestock Caracal conflict. Um, let's hear from um, the, the local, pra uh, local practitioners who yes. had a point. Yeah, the local practitioner was mainly concerned about uh, the state practitioner who was suggesting to compromise the shrew habitat just for the sake of uh, car caracal <coughs> and uh, extension for the pastoralists. However, for us, the ecologist and the conservationist, every organism contributes equally. So, we, the conservationists at the local level, we are, we are the intermediate. We can interact with the states and the pastoralists. So we suggest dialogue, sit down, round table, and agree, instead of eliminating other parts. Um, given the, the comment about hunting from the tourism stakeholders, the participant from the International Conservation Organization has requested to speak. Yeah, we'd, we'd like to clarify um, some issues and also restate our opposition to hunting of the caracal. It's important to notice that these uh, verified sightings came from our biological surveys that we sponsored in the same expedition that discovered the weaver. Um, and they are sightings, they are not the whole range of the caracal. So um, we just want to point out that they're not the only places to focus on for the caracal because it's Several caracal are using this entire area. In fact, the results of our survey indicate that this is a dispersal area, possibly a sink for uh, young males that are dispersing. Um, and because of that, uh, it's unlikely that hunting can take place here and only cull older males. Uh, you might be taking out younger males that would later be important to the population, or also d dispersing individuals that are coming down temporarily from the mountains and it would be very difficult for hunters to distinguish um, what age and sex their caracal was before they shot it. So again, we'd like to encourage that the caracal hunting not be undertaken 
uh, but we have some sympathy for the pastoralist suggestions because we think that some of the caracal use of uh, land out into the pastoralist's area is probably promoting uh, conflicts between wildlife and the pastoralists, and so the, we'd be interested in looking at ways of reducing that. Um, yes, the participants from the Ministry of Agriculture. Yeah, I think uh, we appreciate the discussion as it relates to the the proposed protected area, and uh, but uh, the farmers said they had a, they, are, they are opposed to this plan of introducing the genetically modified maize. So we'd like to know their position so that we can maybe advise or talk to them about our own position. Okay, um, farmers. Okay, uh, I think that uh, the GMO is a uh, uh, disadvantage. When we say that, you know, the advantage is for us. One, uh, it may not adapt our environment, and sometimes there may be disease and there may be droughts. One thing, the, uh, another is that, you know, it's it's uh, not important for us because our health effect, there may, there may be a health effect. Therefore, if you are sure there is no any health effect on the farmers, uh, it, may be, it may be a good, but there is no any assurance of the GMO means. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to say something also? No. 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 Okay. So, a response? Uh, actually, this 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 product has been tested, and now the the biodiversity institute did a lot of tests trial in different regions of the country, and it has been proven that this this is this is suitable for our our soil and is resistant to disease.